as we move forward for the rest of the season, we were talking with our long range department here and they have a pretty important, uh, let's say, a part of the forecast as we move forward during the month of June and July pertaining to severe weather. Sure does. Good morning. And this is related to the shifting threats this yeah. severe weather season has been very active. We're going to be gradually, though, shifting the risk from more of a tornado threat to that of a damaging wind threat with clusters of thunderstorms here over the next couple of weeks. Well, what a time frame we've had. In fact, you know what? It's not like we've seen a, a, a big tornado season. It's been consolidated to about a 30 day period. I want to show you this, John, get your uh, in, uh, your thoughts on this. These are the tornado reports for uh, during about a month's time, April 25th, right through the end of May. It escalated fast as it our did. long range experts were talking about and look at the coverage all the way from the southern plains up to the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. So many communities have had tornado impacts and some of these have been particularly strong with lots of damage and tragically some fatalities as well. And look at that, uh, look at that line. It just shows you we were actually below the historical average for much of this year, John, but it just shows you how active it was during that 30 day period. As soon as we hit that late April time period, mm -hmm. it's like a hockey stick way above the long term historic average. And now we're actually at the uh, most active severe weather season since 2011 and the number two most active since 1950. That's puts the, what we've been dealing with into perspective. Now, the reason we were able to make this statement about the severe weather shifting from more of a tornado to damaging winds is because we see a, a, a significant shift in the pattern moving forward. That is correct. We're going to be dealing with an area of high pressure that's going to be amplifying here across uh, parts of the south. This is this big heat dome that's been brought, bringing all the heat and the persistent drought to Mexico that's going to build to the north here and that means that the jet stream is going to shift here further north and so the area that we're going to be dealing with those persistent thunderstorms will also translate to the north from the Dakotas to parts of the Great Lakes and even toward the mid-Atlantic. Yeah and with that John listen we're still worried about some severe weather no doubt about that but here are kind of the key talking points as we move forward. That's uh, the main thing here is we're going to be evolving toward the risk of fast moving thunderstorm clusters, mm -hmm. which are notorious for producing destructive winds. Now, we're not saying that's going to occur over that entire path, but those are the areas that we're going to want people to be aware of here in the next couple of weeks. There could even be a derecho or two that comes out of this type of pattern, which is a particularly uh, intense uh, thunderstorm windstorm. Also flash flooding risks. And Bernie, there won't be any risk for pe or there will not be any pe rest for people across the Midwest that have been dealing with rounds of tornadoes. Now more concerns around these damaging winds, while at the same time the reduced risk for severe thunderstorms will occur across parts of the southern plains. Now listen, we are saying that the tornado risk is lower, John, but it's not going to be zero, is it? No, it never is. Even when you get those clusters of thunderstorms that tend to have more widespread damaging winds, they can still have embedded tornadoes. Great time to download the AccuWeather app. Stay on top of the weather in the next couple of weeks. There's not going to be any rest in this active weather pattern. The threats will change. We'll keep you updated about them here on the AccuWeather Network and on the AccuWeather app. You know, John, and there's even an increase with the, with these clusters, the these MCCs and MCSs. There's also oftentimes that threat continues for severe weather well past the uh, well past sunset, right? Yeah. It often does. And uh, the other thing about these clusters of storms that we have to be on the lookout for, sometimes it can feel like a little bit of an inland hurricane, although it's a completely different meteorological setup. Sometimes these clusters of storms produce damaging wind gusts to near 80 miles per hour yeah. along a long track. So stay alert over the next couple of weeks.